when I tell my non-gamer friends that I sometimes play board games by myself, their reaction is usually something like, oh, that's sad. But then I just explain to them that playing games by myself is a lot less sad than playing games with my imaginary friends, and my therapist says that I'm making some real progress. The sentiment is weird, though. I mean, Solitaire is one of the most widely played card games in the world, and people play solo video games all the time. But for some reason, when it comes to board games, there's a little bit of a weird feeling around solo gaming from gamers and non-gamers alike. I admit I used to be one of those people. I thought that what I really enjoyed about board games was sharing this social experience around a table and that doing it by myself without those people could only ever be a lesser experience. But then in 2020, when the world shut down, my only options for gaming were playing more tabletop simulator or finally breaking out those games with solo modes and giving it a go. And once I got over how strangely quiet solo board gaming can be, I really started to thoroughly enjoy games like Arkham Horror, Oniram, and Welcome To. Sometimes to the point that I found the solo experience of certain games to be more enjoyable than playing those games with others. Turns out, loneliness is fun. So when my friend gave me Lux Eterna as a birthday gift, I was pretty excited to dive in. Lux Eterna is a small box solo game designed by Tony Boydell with art from Alex Lee, published by Capstone Games. You play as the captain of the Lux Eterna, and let me tell you, you are stressed. Every system on your ship is failing, and you only have a limited amount of time to get these things repaired before this piece of shit falls apart, or you get sucked into a black hole. The core gameplay centers around drawing four cards on every turn and deciding how those cards are going to interact with your failing systems. Each system's health is represented by a standard die that starts the game at a value of two. If the system's health increases beyond six, it is fully repaired, but if it ever drops below one, it collapses. One of the game's end conditions is repairing three of these systems while no other systems are under repair. If you can do that, you win. But if four or more systems ever collapse, you're dead. And dead is bad. You can't win if you're dead you just lose. Another way the game can end is if you get through the deck before the timer runs out. If you can do that, you also win. But if the timer runs out or you get sucked into a black hole, again, you're dead, you lose. If you manage to pull off a win, your score is then calculated by your ship's starting position in relation to the black hole, as well as the status of your repaired and or collapsed systems. On your turn, you're gonna draw four cards and each of these cards can be used in one of three ways. For its event, for its action, or for its speed. The event is an amount of damage that will be dealt to a ship's system matching the card's color. The action is the card's ability to help you manipulate the dice on your systems, slow down your ship's speed toward that black hole, and uh, mitigate glitches, which are negative cards that are shuffled into the deck. The speed is the amount of spaces your ship progresses towards the black hole. After assigning one card to each of these three things, your fourth card can be stashed away in your cache to be used on a future turn. Each game will have a number of glitch cards shuffled into the deck. These cards are pretty catastrophic to your progress. They can do things like damage your ship's systems, or shuffle discarded cards back into the deck, or render your cache unusable for the rest of the game. This balancing act between the cards that you draw is really the meat of the game. Some cards have really great actions, but using that action might force you to deal big damage to one of your ship's systems. And some of these actions can be kind of risky, like re-rolling a die on one of your systems, which is something you usually only want to do if your system value is already low. But sometimes you just got to risk it for the biscuit before that biscuit crumbles apart in the middle of space. The game does a really good job of making you feel like you're just constantly putting out fires. And as soon as you successfully put out one fire, you remember that you left a can of flammable space gas sitting next to another fire, and now you're just burning the fuck out of your biscuit or uh, navigation room. Each system has both a good and bad effect that comes into play when the system is either repaired or collapsed. And a lot of the cards actions let you swap dice around on the system so that you can prioritize which ones you'd rather have the effect for. This brings about some interesting decisions that you have to make on the fly because the clock is ticking. It's kind of like when you have to decide between spending your money on food or gas or health insurance, except it's fun because it's just a game. Just a nice little escape. Now, a lot of this seems like pretty standard solo or co-op gameplay, and in many ways, 
It is. Playing this game feels very reminiscent of other real-time games that I've played like Space Team or Pandemic Rapid Response, but the tightness of this game feels less chaotic than Space Team and less fiddly than Rapid Response. My first impression of the game was that it's interesting, but it's not really anything I haven't seen before. There's multi-use cards, a timer, things taking damage, bad event cards, and yet I would still find myself sitting down at my coffee table to play this game, expecting just to play it once or twice over a cup of coffee and two hours go by and I'm still just playing it, playing it, playing it, trying to get a better score, or trying to see if I can beat the game in 10 minutes or even eight minutes instead of 15. It's simple enough to have a good flow, but with enough interesting decisions to slow you down and build up that tension. And honestly, it just feels good to play. There are several variables to tweak the difficulty perhaps too many variables, but I like that you're able to ramp up the challenge in different ways. Each system has five different cards with only one of each showing up per game, so that adds a lot of nice variety to each game that you play. The big cards are nice, and all the quality of the components is what you would expect from a publisher like Capstone. The art and aesthetic here is really nice. I love the graphic novel illustrative style of the art and the simple color schemes that line up with the cards colors really nicely. My only real criticism with the game is that the individual mechanisms don't feel super fresh, but they're tried and true and they come together in a nice tight package that gives you a lot of the same moments and tension from larger games with similar designs, but in a much shorter time. Lux Eterna is what I'm going to call the perfect coffee table game. Uh, it's not going to blow your mind and you might get sick of it after like 30 plays, but I don't know, I just really like having it around. It's very easy to set up, the rules are simple enough to remember if you haven't played in a while, and it's just a really solid little solo game that I think is well worth the $20 price tag. Now if you'll excuse me, I'm about to teach Race for the Galaxy to some of my friends here. So, there's five phases. The first phase is explore. Oh, you need a player in? Yeah, that's for you. The first phase is explore. 